Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Matthew. I'm a music producer. I'm a drummer. I'm a singer songwriter, and I'm a worship leader. And uh, today, I'm going to be breaking down "Unto the Lamb" live from Upper Room. I'm definitely going to be looking at the lyrics, the production, the arrangement, the melodies, and most importantly, uh, some of those drum parts in there. I'm um, just kind of giving my reaction. Basically, anything I think of in the moment. I'm super excited to try to get some of these videos done. It's not going to be perfect. Haven't done many of these before, but uh, super excited to, to get started. Um, most importantly, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Give us a like. Give me a comment uh, with suggestions of what I should react to next. I want to make sure that if there are songs out there that you guys want to hear, um, that I can make sure to provide that. And uh, yeah, let's get started. This is in Unto the Lamb. that synth part. Love the classic Nord piano. Um, something about it just always sounds prime. I don't know what it is. I don't love the red color, but at this point it's just so iconic that it's just you got to kind of get used to it. Also, um, backing it up, interesting that um, they're all using wired mics. I don't know. I feel like a lot of places are switching to going completely wireless, but I still see upper room and I think Bethel uses wired mics sometimes. Just kind of interesting little comment. I I don't really know one way or the other um, why they would make that decision um, or if it affects anything, but just figured I'd point it out. We cannot ignore it. We hear your steps. We feel your kingdom. Jesus, you're taking over. Treasures and crowns down at your feet. Honor and fame only belong to you. Tons of space on this. Like, they've just opened up this song completely. When they started out with the super full pad in there in the keys, and now they pulled out the pad as, as much as they can and they just have that basic synth part in there. Uh, I'm sorry, basic keys part in there. They got the vocals leaving lots of gaps in between the verses. Um, definitely gonna be moving up to a pretty, pretty big uh, section coming up here. I can feel it. You are before everything, grasping it all together. Just one, just one found worthy. One, just one, just one. Ooh, interesting choice of the minor chord there. Also, love the synth bass mixed in with real bass. Um, such a cool idea, and I love when people can do that in their songs. Let me back that up for that melody. One, just one, just one. Holy is the Lord on high, your glory fills the temple. Holy is the Lord on high. Love that melody. That is, that is catchy. Let me back that up. Your glory fills the temple. Holy is the Lord on high. Unto the Lamb, beaten and bruised, killed.
killed for our sin. You were the sacrifice. They brought in the real bass now, which is interesting choice um, when the drums aren't really in full yet. But I love that they've added, um, looks like cello in there. Um, that's pretty awesome. Um, basic drum uh, tom fills here. Uh, but we still got five minutes left to go, so I guess they got plenty of time to build this up. I just know this is going to be huge once it comes up all together. Um, let's play this. Race from the dead, breathing again. Our Jewish king, seated in majesty. One, just one, just one. basic chord progression here um, definitely also a pretty basic chorus uh, Tom pattern through from the worship music scene um, you know they're doing that four on the floor kick um, they're doing that basic uh, snare on every other um, every other line and it just really adds a lot to the song um, when they don't add the snare prior to this so they've had now we're now three minutes into the song this is the first time that you're hearing the snare so it really just accents that and makes it feel a little bit bigger um, as part of the progression of how they're building they've been using lots of cymbal swells up to this point um, they've been using um, minimalistic tom uh, fills and tom uh, builds um, they actually did that a little bit more in the pre-chorus there um, it looks like they tagged the pre-chorus twice just to kind of give it a little bit more energy that last time through. Um, and now um, we'll, we'll play it back here and you'll hear when they switch from the tom fills to the, the chorus, it really, it almost pulls back a little bit. And a lot of times you'll hear, I, I must have missed it if they're doing it here. Usually they'll add in like a tambourine or a shaker part um, in the background to kind of fill in for the fact that they are doing less on the drums but um, still want to keep that energy up. Let me, let's back it up and see if they do. Holy is the Lord on high. Your glory fills the temple. Holy yeah, you can hear there's a tambourine in the background of the, uh, it's probably in their backing tracks, um, slightly in there, um, just kind of giving a bunch of energy. And I think there might be a ton of reverb on it. So it just sounds like background, like white noise. Um, but it's probably not in here during the pre-chorus, so let's see. Just one, just one found worthy. One, just one, just one. Holy is the Lord on high. Your glory fills the temple. Holy is the Lord on high. So now the drummer's doing something interesting that I love when 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 drummers do. Um, this has been more, I'd say probably in the last five years, this has been more common, um, but uh, they start to do the builds um, by just riding on one of the cymbals as like a way to build the energy. And so they're not just like traditional um, crashing on a cymbal to keep like the beat going. That's what the hi-hat's for, uh, not sorry, the, that's what the tambourine's for in the background. Um, they're not changing the pattern of the actual drum it, uh, drums itself. They're still keeping the offbeat, boom, ba, 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 bo
uh, but they are starting to add in a layer of just driving the the symbol to kind of get that layer of build um, and then I bet you a little bit later on he'll switch over to his uh, the symbol in the middle is which I think is it's either a huge crash or it's it's his ride um, and uh, they'll probably switch over halfway through um, or when the bridge starts to come in so let's see Holy is the Lord on high. That's also very difficult to do, by the way, to keep your left hand going um, in, a, in a way that doesn't feel like it's just absolutely smashing that symbol. Um, because if there's there's lots of things that you can do with like um, both hands doing different patterns and, and then your, your kick doing a different pattern as well. So that, that's a lot of, uh, of drumming in general, but um, keeping that, I think it's like 16th notes on your... Uh, snare or on your cymbal um, that can be very difficult especially where you're trying not to overpower anything else because there's parts of the song where you just want to be absolutely driving and you want to be kind of maybe doing eighth notes on your right hand and 16th notes on your on your left hand um, and that's certainly uh, cool during a build but during a part like this where it's not necessarily uh, building full yet and they just wanted to add that dynamics it's very difficult to keep that 16th note on the cymbal and just keep it light and airy but uh, still adding presence in and not overwhelming so uh, you know you might not notice that first but that is actually really difficult to do because typically you'd, your right hand would be the one that you would do that but he's playing his whole tom uh, part on his right hand so very very cool <laughs> So that was kind of cool. Um, one thing you'll notice there is that they started out the drums um, at, well, I'll back up even before then. This is the first melodic part that we actually have from a guitar, electric guitar lead in here that was prominent enough to even st stand out, which I think was interesting that we're five minutes in and they're still adding new parts into the song, which is cool. I love when bridges have that kind of breakdown in there. Um, really interesting that, like I said, this is the first time we're getting any sort of electric guitar in there, um, but it was very tasteful um, as far as the part, very simple. And I bet you that probably repeats throughout the bridge here as they add other instruments on. Then we can talk about the drums. The drums started out doing um, dynamically uh, some clicks on the the rim of the of the snare. Um, really, um, you know, I love when when there's snare clicks, um, it, or just really any tom clicks in general, because it just kind of adds like a different sound in there you're not used to hearing, um, and yet it still sounds percussional and, and like it fits. So that was cool. Um, and then they transitioned to that same beat. Um, on the snare. What I think is interesting about that is that same beat on the snare, the um, dig -a -dig -a -dig, um, that's the same uh, rhythm as the vocals when the vocals come in. So they're almost like preluding to that, which I think is really cool. I love when the drums have a unique, unique part that they sync to the vocals. There's a couple other songs, um, if I can, if I can think of it, uh, later on down the road. Uh, oh, uh, My Testimony by Elevation Worship. Um, there's a part in the chorus, um, and um, basically the lyric goes, this, this is my testimony from death to life. And on the from death to life, the drums go boom, boom, ba And I just really uh, love whenever they syncopate any sort of um, drum beat on top of like a vocal part um, because it 
does separate the drums in that to being um, kind of its unique a unique part um, that fits with this specific song instead of just like a generic beat that kind of like is in every single song similar to what i was saying earlier where like the chorus um that was a very basic uh beat that's like in a majority of songs when they go into a chorus um and this right here that's unique to this specific melody or, or rhythm and it would be very uh, unique to this song. So I'm going to back it up actually, because I missed so much. There were so many things that came in. I was trying to gather as many as possible. All right, let's go back. See if this is far enough. That's what I was talking about. So now that's actually really interesting. They really don't have their snare very loud in the mix, which is sometimes um, I have complaints about that. Um, sometimes, sometimes it fits, um, but other times like you really just kind of want that snare to be in there, especially if you're doing any sort of like builds on that. And it, if it's not prominent enough, it just gets lost in the mix. Um, the, the kick in this is very subby. Um, so they pulled out a lot of the punch on the kick, and I really can just hear it kind of throbbing um, just like on the low end there along with the bass frequency, um, which, um, you know, I can definitely appreciate. But without the snare, it's almost like the drums are not super full in this song. Uh, but I can see, I was wondering if he was doing it because it went from that like uh, almost like a marching pattern with the snare um, and, you know, the bass driving along and the electric guitar um, kind of driving um, to then the snare stopping completely. And I was wondering if it was building, but you just can't hear it because it's just not prominent enough in the mix. And I can see from what he's doing here that he is building on the ride. Um, like I had mentioned, he probably was going to do earlier. Um, but I think during this part, he's probably slightly building on the uh, snare as well, or he's using a tom to build um, but I think it's probably the snare based on the way his hands are positioned. Beautiful man who reigns forever. Glory to God in the highest. We praise you. Well, okay. Love that fill, by the way. Beautiful man who reigns forever. Glory to God in the highest. We praise you. Definitely building on the left hand snare. Man, I wish that was hotter in the mix, but it is what it is. Until the
backing up a little bit, I know this is getting really long, it's a super long song, um, backing up a little bit to when they went back into the bridge and they tagged it again, that was the first like unique bass part to the song, and it really wasn't even super unique, they just went up in a higher octave um, and walked down the bass line instead of... Um, instead of sticking with the traditional uh, root chords like they were doing prior, they went to more of a walk down, um, which I thought f was um, interesting. It stood out to me. It was definitely the first, you know, really unique part that was in there for the bass. Um, classic coming back into the chorus uh, with that, um, with the drums just being um, absolutely crashing on the, on. Um, I think he's probably crashing on the ride cymbal there. Um, and uh, oh man, it's I love those choruses when they can just uh, they build they build they build they come back into just a simple drum beat um, and then they build back into another tagging bridge. I'm gonna actually play it back because um, it was definitely good. And then that guitar part was still in there again, um, kept bringing that back around now that everything's in. And again, there you see it. Um, he's using the, the the ride symbol to build. It's like I said, this is a, un a unique um, thing for the last few years of worship music. Um, in the in the past, in something like that, they probably would have gone to a uh, classic uh, tom, um, like probably low tom and snare build um, to just like build that part back up. But what they're doing here is they're keeping the building on the symbols and the the snare just to kind of keep that. It all it's all high end energy and then they use the kick to build and I think they I think he doubles the kick there as well. Um So that was almost like a halftime fill. So a lot of times like dubstep, um, metal music will use it as well. Um, basically they come into a part of the song. It's been a lot of energy, maybe the, the same, um, rhythm for a bit. And they kind of just went into a halftime feel there where, um, the, the crash, the kick was all hitting on, um, it was on quarter notes. It was like, and they had the, the he was still riding the 16th notes on the hi-hat, um, but uh, definitely keeping that going. And then he switched it back up to the eighth notes and it just felt like it just, there was a huge lift in the pace of the song um, at that point, as soon as he, as soon as he drove into overtime um, there and kind of doubled that kick again. And uh, that's just like a huge way to get that extra lift at the end of the song. Because if he had just done the eighth notes all the way through, it would have just kind of felt like, all right, this part's dragging. But they just kept it interesting by slowing, ironically, the, the beats down to the fourth notes, uh, quarter notes, and then and then uh, bringing it back in, bringing it back up. Let's play it back. Double. That's the part that I was talking about earlier when I said that you would play uh, eighth notes on the crash symbol and sixteenth on the on the symbols. If you look what he's doing right there. Um... We praise you. Come on. Cool. Well, guys, that was uh, Unto the Lamb by Upper Room. And uh, definitely um, some really, really interesting parts in there. Um, 
definitely uh, some cool builds, um, some unique drum parts. I uh, really love that part in the bridge. Um, definitely with the drums in there, um, you know, appreciated the electric guitar riffs um, in there. The vocalist uh, did a great job, um, I think, of kind of keeping the space um, empty at the beginning and then filling it in with a lot of ad libs and stuff later on um, just to allow for the for that to, to happen and that space to, to come through. Um, a lot of worship music is dynamics. Um, and so, you know, if you don't have a sense of the dynamics and you're just playing a part or you're just singing a, a song, um, a lot of times you can lose that that energy or lose the, the moment you're trying to create. So definitely appreciate what he was able to do there. I think he did a great job. And um, yeah, guys, so that was Unto the Lamb live by Upper Room. Um, Thank you for sticking around all the way through this video. I know it was kind of long. Um, I like to, to kind of pause it a lot. There's a lot to break down, especially in a seven minute song. Um, definitely, you know, thank you guys for sticking around. Let me know down below uh, what songs I should react to next and uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys again. And uh, I'll see you next time.